So one night, um, I was reading one of my favorite science fiction books called Hit Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And as you can imagine, it is a story about aliens and space travel. And in parts of it, uh, they use, by their words, the fastest spaceship ever built. And it can go anywhere in a part of a second. Uh, it was driven by the so-called infinity improbability drive, um, which uh, the name came because it was so impossible to be invented that the chances were zero to infinity. And this was how I felt about uh, parallel testing and the lack of tooling. Uh, this is how, how the title came out. Of course, today I'm not going to um, talk about interstellar travel rather than parallel testing. And the main question that I'll try to answer will be how we can deliver high quality software faster. My name is Anton Angel. Uh, I'm CTO of Automate the Planet. I have several years of experience uh, in the field of test automation. And uh, for six years, I worked as quality assurance architect in two big Bulgarian companies. Uh, and part of my job was to write and design scalable test automation solutions. And at the same time, I consulted a couple of companies regarding their test automation and led uh, several trainings. So here is our game plan. Uh, even if you don't have the goal to speed up your tests through parallel testing, I think you will find lots of insights about distributed testing and eventually how to optimize your continuous integration or continuous delivery. And definitely you'll see many examples from our own company. Um, now I will quote the state of testing report for 2017 by Smart Bear. 68% of the people want to deploy weekly, daily, or multiple times a day. So to the end of the presentation, you will see how our company made it possible to release our product uh, a couple of days, a couple of times a day. How do people run their heavy tests? And here by heavy test, I mean tests that take more than one second to execute. Usually these are database, UI, API, or system integration tests. Um, they can take up from one second to a couple of minutes, but on average we can conclude that they take around 30 seconds. Um, in all of the channels, Automate the Planet has over 25,000 followers. So we ask them to participate in a short survey, and I will use the data from the survey to illustrate some points. Uh, and they summarizes the practices from more than 50 companies. The first question that we asked our followers was, how many tests do you have? And I summarized the results in five groups based on the count of these heavy tests. And as you can see on the slide, just a second, more than um, almost half of the respondents mentioned that they have between 500 and 1,000 heavy tests. So on average, we can conclude that most companies have around 750 heavy tests. And if we, may, if we make a simple calculation uh, based on the discount and the 30 seconds uh, per test, we can conclude that you need more than six hours to execute all of these tests sequentially on a single machine, which means that you can help you cannot use these tests for continuous integration or continuous delivery. Why is that? Because if you want to uh, make it possible to deliver your product multiple times a day, you need to be able to execute all of these tests at least two to three times a day or under three hours. Why is that? Because sometimes there is a bug in the tests or um, some random environmental issue occurred during the run and you need to repeat the whole process again and again. Our second question to our followers was, when do you execute your tests? And their answers were identical to what I read in the state of testing report. As you can see, 40% uh, of them already execute their tests in continuous integration. But if we closely observe the numbers here, we can conclude that 60% of the people struggle with the speed of their tests. And even there were some edge cases in the answers. Uh, such as some people execute their tests during the weekends, only during the nights, or even monthly. Um, so, I can define at least three types of parallel testing. The first one is when you rely uh, on, the, on your unit testing framework. 
For example, if you have 100 uh, tests and you want to execute them on a single machine with five CPU cores, on each core, 20 tests will be executed. This is what uh, Dan was showing uh, in the last talk. Um, the second option is to use distributed testing or to run your tests simultaneously on multiple machines. To do that, you need complex tooling such as uh, Microsoft test agents. And you can mix both approaches, uh, running the tests um, in parallel on multiple machines and utilize the power of the, your unit testing framework. Uh, in our observation, the optimal number of uh, simultaneous test processes is equal to 1.5 up to 2 multiplied by the number of CPU cores, which means that if your your virtual machine has two CPU cores, the optimal number is equal to four. Uh, and in my experience, in the companies where I worked in the past, most virtual machines that we used had two CPU cores. So they're quite not so powerful. One big machine or many smaller? To answer to this question, I need to tell you the difference between uh, horizontal scaling and vertical scaling. Horizontal scaling meaning means uh, adding more machines to existing pool of resources. Whereas um, vertical scaling means adding more power to an existing machine. And usually many uh, smaller machines uh, are cheaper than one big one. What are the advantages of distributed testing? The most obvious one is speed. Instead of executing your test for 20 hours, they execute for three. Then, since, you, uh, since the tests are executing uh, faster, you can um, release your product uh, more often. Even if you don't have the goal to release daily, you can optimize uh, your continuous integration process by including and executing all of your tests in the continuous integration. This way, you have higher coverage in shorter throughput time. And as you know, the more often you execute all of your tests, their return of investment increases. And the more often your tests are executed, you will be able to locate easier the flaky, not well-written tests. In order to understand how, why we solved the problem and how, you need to understand what we needed to test. Uh, our company specializes in uh, building test frameworks and tools for testing web, mobile, API, and desktop. But it's not a visual application. It is a set of uh, code libraries. So, for example, for the web part, we use WebDriver under the hood. And we add some features on top of it. So we had to test that. We had to test a different browsers, uh, all of the integration with cloud providers, and so on. So, in the end, we uh, ended up for the web part uh, with 4,500 UI tests. And I'm not counting all of the unit tests that we have. Uh, if you run all of these tests sequentially on a single machine, you will need more than 16 hours to do it. As you can see here, um, this is an image from our Visual Studio Team Services build. So this was unacceptable since we wanted to be able to release our product like to give updates every day, multiple times. So we created MISA. What is MISA? It is a free open source distributed test runner. It is written um, with the latest .NET technologies such as .NET Core, ISP.NET Core and many more. Um, it is cross-platform, meaning that you can run tests on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. And it is designed to be cross programming uh, language agnostic, which means that you can run tests written in different technologies, such as C Sharp, Java, Python, and so on. Uh, some of the most prominent features, it can distribute your tests across multiple machines and even run them in parallel on each machine without modifying the source code. Um, it can smartly balance the tests across uh, the remote machines based on the previous execution times. Then you can retry the failing tests a couple of times to see whether there is a bug in the tests or a real problem in your system under tests and so on. This is really handy. Um, it is delivered as a single command line interface, only a zip. You unzip it. You don't even need to install Java.NET or something else. Uh, 
we have some extensions for, um, for example, for UI testing for cleaning the previous web driver sessions, killing browsers, and so on, so that the state of the test agency is uh, kept clean. And as mentioned, it's cross-platform. So before MISA, we had 4,500 tests. They run for 16 hours. And after that, we created four virtual machines with two CPU cores. And we decided that we will execute one test at a time on each machine. So no parallel testing on each machine. And the tests were executed, as you can expect, four times faster, or uh, a little over four hours. So before uh, showing you a short demo, uh, I want to show you um, a little bit how we use it. First, we need to start the MISA in server mode, which means uh, the server is the thing that controls all agents and runners. Then on each machine, we have an agent. Um, the more agents you have, the faster your test will, will be executed. We use the keyword test agent. Uh, we specify an agent tag, which later you can use to filter on which machines your test will be executed. And we mention the IP address of the server. And the last part is where you execute your tests. Usually this is started from a continuous integration job. Uh, as you'll see in a minute, we use the keyword runner. And we mention a couple of other parameters, such as where your test files are, where the test results will be saved, and so on. Now it's time for demo. I made a video. Uh, Should I move it? Hmm? It is shifted here. Should I move it? No. Okay. So I created a simple uh, web page. Uh, written in Bootstrap that we will uh, we'll write a test against. As you can see, we do all of the fields. It's uh, like a simulation of a check checkout page. Nothing fancy. Um, one of these tests written in WebDriver takes up to three to five seconds depending on the machine where it is executed. Uh, this is what our test will do. And now uh, I'll show you one of our web driver tests. Uh, here it is. So first uh, we will create the HTML file in the test in it. This is really important. This is like an attribute uh, in MS test that we will later use uh, to show you a comparison um, with MISA with the native test runner where our tests will be executed simultaneously in 16 threads. Here we take a new instance every time of WebDriver. We get a free port using this method here, which is thread safe. So each test has a, a unique port and a unique driver. And we start Chrome in headless mode. Next, uh, we, will we wait for the, we go to the URL, we wait for the first element, the first name uh, on the field, then we, uh, then we just start to fill all of the fields, that's it. And finally, we quit the, the driver. This is one of our tests. And my goal was uh, to make the comparison to have like uh, 1,000 tests. So I created, as you can see here from this, uh, from the another project, created a sim simple console application for generating all of these tests, uh, 1,000 tests. In, um, so this is the application that we use to generate the tests. Nothing fancy in the end, just uh, write all of this text to a text file, that's it. Uh, the tests are located uh, in the test project below here in the checkout page tests. 
And as you can see, as you will see, uh, the test file is quite enormous, like over uh, 40,000 lines. So the goal here now is to show you the difference between how when we run the tests uh, distributed and in parallel and when we use the native test runner of MS tests. So I created 11 virtual machines in Azure. Uh, in one of them, uh, I will start uh, the tests in 16 threads, executing them with MS test, and on other 10, uh, I'm using Mesa to execute them. So here is how we use it Mesa uh, in our continuous integration job to test Bellatrix. First, this is the typical workflow. Get the source code, then we restore some uh, .NET packages, like downloading third-party libraries, that's it. Um, then we build the project, all of the projects actually, because we have 90 of them. Then we copy the, um, the build outputs files to a special folder, delete the old test results files, and at the end run and execute the tests with Mesa. As you can see, it is downloaded here in this folder, and there are as you can see, there are many parameters here because we use all of the features of Mesa, but the most important one is the runner, the server, where um, we need to mention the IP and the port, and the path to the uh, DLL, to the, to the file where our tests are. And in the end, when the test results are published, we publish them to the Visual Studio team services. And uh, here is how uh, the results look like in Visual Studio Team Services. These are our continuous integration tests that execute quite fast, as you can see. They execute for less than three minutes using this. And most of them, as you can see, they execute for less than a second, and which is quite fast for UI tests, actually. And this is our uh, demo continuous integration job. Uh, we start on each machine six uh, threads, test threads. So this means that we have 10 machines and multiplied by six. This means that our test using Mesa uh, will start 60 simultaneous test processes. Uh, this is uh, the machine where our um, uh, test Mesa server is started. Uh, how we started actually? Uh, First, on each machine, I have unzipped and downloaded uh, the Mesa binaries. So first, we uh, go to the folder where Mesa is downloaded. We locate the folder, this Win 10 thing. Then we open the uh, command line. And the only thing that we need to type is Mesa.exe init server. That's it. This will start Mesa in server mode. Then on all other machines, uh, once the server is started, we need to start Mesa in agent mode. How we do that? I have already done that, but I will show you. Um, this is how Mesa look, looks like when the um, agent is started. I have even created a batch file where to be easier to not type this uh, every time. We just, again, navigate to the folder, um, write test agent, the tag, and the point where the server is. That's it. So we use our continuous integration job in the example to execute the tests in 60 threads on these 10 virtual machines. So we start the job, and uh, on the 11th machine, here as you will see on the demo, we will start the same project, but using the native test runner to execute the tests in 16 test processes, which if you recall the formula, is not the optimal number for machine with two CPU cores. All of these machines has, uh, have two CPU cores, which means the optimal number here should be four. And I have, uh, if you execute all of these tests sequentially on a single machine, you will need more than one hour, around 70 minutes. 
I tried to execute them uh, with the parallel runner uh, with the optimal number of four, and they executed for more than half an hour. But anyway, I, I want to make the comparison and see and to show you that even if you boost and increase this uh, test threads count, um, the test time won't improve. And even there will be some problems, as you will see. Uh, here, the thing that uh, I will show you is uh, that in the file, um, which is not looking quite OK uh, in Notepad, uh, we have this attribute for pointing that we will start the tests in uh, 16 threads. And at the end, I will just make the, I made the video a little bit shorter so that you can see the results and not wait like 40 minutes for the native runner to finish. Here, as you can see, this is the build with MESA. The tests were executed for six minutes, which means that they executed more than 10 times faster than using the, running them sequentially. And this is how after 40 minutes works the native test runner. It completely crashed. As I told you, um, up to six or seven threads, it's fine. But maybe this is still a problem of MS test, I don't know. Um, but first, the Chrome started to crash. Then um, the runner throwed, as you can see here, throw uh, system out of memory exception because all of the threads. Um, anyway, up to four threads, it's safe. But after that, I don't know. So usually, uh, when we execute our tests this way, we just uh, distribute them across many machines. That's, that is our way. So let's continue. Um, in order to solve the problem, I read many things uh, for a couple of days. And because I wanted to catch up and not rely only on my previous experience from, for the companies where I worked for in the past. Uh, and the funny thing is that for eight years, the ways how people execute their tests in parallel has not really changed. Uh, to addition to that, I, um, we asked our followers, how do you run your tests in parallel? And as you will see, their answers were almost identical to what I read. Uh, some of them use Microsoft test agents, a small number of them. Uh, others prefer... Um, to use custom tools or continuous integration tools, as you saw maybe yesterday, uh, to distribute their tests. However, uh, the majority of them rely on the, their unit testing framework, TestNG, Java, uh, JUnit, uh, and um, in combination with Selenium Grid, if you are talking about UI tests, of course. As you saw, not all uh, unit testing frameworks uh, are excellent for running your tests in parallel. For example, MS Test uh, didn't support that uh, before a couple of months ago when they released version 2 with the parallel option. But as you saw, they have some problems still. Um, however, if you are um, OK with and your te unit testing framework is behaving OK, you can use it together side by side with MESA, and you will be able to distribute your tests across remote machines. And uh, you can use some of the other cool features, like retrying the failing tests. Uh, now I will make comparison with some other popular solutions with MESA. One of my favorites uh, is uh, Selenoid. Uh, yesterday we had a presentation about it. It is like uh, I don't know, Selenium Grid on steroids. It gives you clean installations of um, popular browsers in Docker containers. It is excellent for running your tests in um, Opera, Chrome, Firefox. And even now, I had to put a bullet here. Uh, as we saw yesterday, it supports even APM and mobile testing. However, how it differs from is, well, it is not a test runner. So if you want to be able to run your tests simultaneously, you still need a way to run them in parallel. So it's not a test runner. The same is valid for a standard Selenium grid and its tuned versions, such as Selenium, um, Selenograph, JSON wire grid, grid router. Uh, you can run tests in parallel with them, but they still need a runner. 
Like if your runner doesn't support parallel testing execution, this means that even if you have 100 hub nodes, your test will be executed still on one of them. Um, some people, uh, as I told you, um, because of the lack of tooling, use continuous integration tools to distribute their tests. The usual practice is to mark your tests with attributes or annotations, such as machine one, machine two, and then uh, use separate uh, runs to execute these tests on, across the machines. But this is, for me, it's a bad practice because the balancing of the test is manual. Every time you add or remove tests, you need to calculate that time in your head, and it's bad. And even there is one more problem. Uh, at the end, since you have multiple runs, you need to find a way to merge the test results uh, created by all of these uh, simultaneous runs. I love Microsoft tools, and actually for a couple of years in my past companies, we used Microsoft test agents to execute all of our tests. However, they have a couple of drawbacks. Uh, they're um, hard to set up and troubleshoot. Um, the documentation is missing almost entirely. Uh, it is like a black box how the tests are distributed across the machines are balanced. Um, and of course, they run only on Windows. Um, as you saw from the example, Mesa has many moving parts. Now I'll tell you how it um, does its magic. First, we have the agent. The first time we, uh, we have the server, the first time we start the server, a portable SQL-wide database is created. And a, a web service is self-hosted on that machine. Uh, and we use the server uh, to coordinate the work between the agents and the runners. So they don't communicate between each other. They communicate through the server using HTTP. So they don't have uh, separate databases. In this database here, we save like, uh, things like walks, uh, messages sent uh, from the agents, uh, test execution times, and so on. This means that if the server is down, the whole thing won't work. So the first time when you start an agent, uh, it registers itself as active. Then it continuously checks whether there are new uh, test runs scheduled to be executed on that machine. Then the so-called extensibility points plugins are loaded and they offer you a way to execute logic in various points of the test execution pipeline, such as before the run, after the run on abortion, and so on. After that, we load the so-called test technology plugins, which help you to execute your test, to merge the test results, to locate the test from the DLLs, and so on. So they are really important. And uh, after that, based on the parallel options, uh, the agent creates multiple test batches, and start all of the processes and waits them to finish. In the end, it merges all of the results and sends them back to the server. Uh, when you start the runner, it again first loads all of the extensions and the test ex extensibility points plugins and the test technology plugins. Then it filters all of the tests uh, that it loaded from uh, your files and it distributes them across uh, all of the agents. Then it zips the test output files uh, and sends them back to the server where each agent can download them. And after that, uh, the second part is where uh, it will wait for all agents to finish their execution. In one more process, uh, it continuously checks whether new, me new messages are sent by all of the agents to be printed on the console. So this is useful uh, when you want to, to see what is happening on the agents in your continuous integration job. In one more process, it continuously checks the health of the agents. So if one of the agents is down, the whole test run will be aborted. And in one more process, it verifies its own health. So if you, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, stop the continuous integration job and the runner is dead, then one of the agents will notice that the runner is down and the test run will be aborted. So at the end, uh, the runner merges the results from all test agents and based on the retry failing option, if it's turned on and there are uh, like failed tests here, 
the whole process will be repeated again for them. And if they succeed, the test results file will be updated. At the end, we again uh, load the so-called extensibility points plugins and execute logic for them, from them. How to get started? First, uh, you can go to our website, download the zip, unzip it, as you saw, start executing, and for a free tool, we have like a great documentation about it. But more importantly, you will find a link to our GitHub page uh, where you can report books, suggest new features, and we are looking for people to help us to write uh, extensions for different technologies such as Java, Python, Ruby. Um, even if you're um, like not comfortable to write it yourself, you can just send me a, like a sample test project and tell me how the tests are executed with your owner and I will write the plugin for half a day. That's it. Uh, so you can go to GitHub, we have a, like a channel there and you can write me. Uh, so in summary, we talked about parallel testing, the different types, uh, the, the various benefits, uh, the different styles, how people execute their tests in parallel. I showed you the project and uh, a little bit demo um, and why we built it. And I wanted to end up with some kind of statistics, but I decided to go even further. So again, I used a similar tool to the one that I showed you, the common one that uh, generated uh, the tests. But this time, I generated 100,000 tests. And each of them executes for one second. Which means that if you execute them sequentially on a single machine, they will need more than 28 hours to finish. So um, the next goal was to create again in Azure 10 virtual machines. But this time, instead of two CPU cores, they had eight CPU cores and 14 gigabytes of RAM. So if you recall the formula, the goal here was to start Mesa in agent mode on each machine, but this time um, start 16 threads on each machine, which means that for 10 machines, we will have like uh, 160 simultaneous test threads. So 100,000 tests, this is the time uh, if you execute them sequentially and ta -dum, ta -dum, the tests were executed for less than 20 minutes using this setup. As you can see here, this is our Visual Studio Team Services build for that. Uh, so I will end up with a quote from the <laughs> most famous, uh, from the CEO from the most famous programming uh, website, uh, Stack Overflow. I will summarize it. To be great QAs, we need to improve the happiness of our developer fellows by giving them frequent releases, and uh, this way giving them negative and, uh, negative and positive feedback faster, and this way improving the quality of our product. Thank you. Helps to turn the microphone on. Uh, Hello. Um, can you go back to your uh, biggest experiment slide and uh, talk about which browsers actually you initialized in those uh, nodes? Where? Uh, in, the, in your biggest experiment slide that you had where you ran and you showed some stats. A couple, couple of slides back. So can you talk about which browsers you executed and you know some of uh, the test results reports or anything like that? Which one? This one? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, here, there were no browsers. Because of that, I made the demo with browsers. This is only like a test, like, for example, if you run um, a database test. So this is actually unit tests. So I wanted to, to show you in the second example that this is not a tool only for UI tests. You can run API tests, database tests, system integration tests, it doesn't matter. This is it. And because of that, the first demo was with browsers. Uh, previously, in the first demo, we had Chrome in headless mode. But you can do it like uh, in not headless mode, it works as well. Hi, Anton. Uh, we have a question here in front. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. Hi, Anton. Hi. Uh, this is Vimal. Uh, so, uh, the real problem of Selenium grid is like uh, a single point of failure, wherein yeah. if the hub goes for a toss, mm -hmm. uh, our entire test execution also goes for a toss, right? So, when you talked about the balancing, right, is it something like a load balancing structure, like wherein you bring multiple servers, not the test agents, the servers, under the balancing structure, so that if even one of the server goes for a task, we have other to support? No, uh, actually, the balancing of the feature of the balancing of the tests is like, uh, for example, Microsoft test agents usually distribute the tests based on the test counts. For example, if you have five nodes and 100 tests, uh, they will just split the test 20 by 20 by 20, you know? Uh, but for example, if your first 20 tests are quite longer than the other batch, your whole test execution will rely on the execution of on, on the, this agent. So our balancing is uh, we execute all of the tests once, then we record all of the test execution times, and then we split the tests not based on the count, but rather than on the on equal batches of time. But it's not like a load balancer where uh, we'll start new instances of Mesa or something like that. Question back here. Hi, uh, this is very, very interesting stuff. Um, I think it's, it's great that you can execute so many test cases. Uh, but my question is, when you have so many test cases executing in so many machines, and you have a bug, how easy it is to detect this bug, to identify how it happens, and, and to be able to get that feedback and f quickly fix it, and then do the quickly release twice per day? Uh, you know, uh, usually I just prefer um, we keep a green build in our company. Like, we have right now over 7,000 tests, and I'm not counting the unit tests. So um, it's really rarely when more than 10 tests failed per build. So I don't need to, to check all of the time. Since the framework is stable, I don't need to check uh, the results all the time. I, I think the question is, when an actual bug is introduced to the product mm -hmm. and your test catches it, mm -hmm. how easy is it to isolate and analyze that failure? Uh, it depends on what, or, uh, what framework do you use, you know? For example, in our uh, product, the tests where, which we um, run, they have, uh, I strive to have meaningful exception messages, for example, when they fail. But this is like a product-specific thing. We strive to do the same for uh, past companies where I worked for in the past. MISA includes the reporting, though, correct? Yeah, it reports it's on about reporting. It's not so about the, the runner itself. OK. OK. Over here. We've got about five minutes, so a couple more. So uh, my question is, is .NET framework required for this MISA? Uh, sorry? Uh, out of .NET network, can we run this MISA? Uh, you don't need to install .NET. Not required? No, no, it's not required. Oh. Since uh, for .NET Core, mm -hmm. uh, we build the tool when you create the binaries, they can be built like um, in a special mode where the, the .NET itself is included in the binaries. So you don't, don't need to install yeah. it. What, what all the languages supported by this? Right now, we support, uh, since our company designs uh, like frameworks for .NET, it primarily runs tests for .NET Core, uh, .NET Framework, and all of the frameworks around that. Uh, but the guy now help us to write the plugins for Java. And I, as I told you, if you need to run your tests written in different technology, you just drop me a line and I will write the plugin for half a day. In continuation with the isolation of the bug, yes. so in continuation of previous question, yep. oh, isolation of the bug, so we do like capturing of the images and video recording mm -hmm. while test uh, execution. Mm -hmm. Now, major issues when we do parallel execution, the consolidation of the logs loses the image, basically, because the image quantity is, size is huge and we can't consult it in a single page. And uh, transferring from server A to server B, it again consumes the time. 
so how that scenario is handled in mesa like if my scripts are unable to capture the video or the images then how the consolidation happens second a major problem is when you trigger the browser in headless mode uh -huh. most of the browsers fail to capture the image images come as blank uh -huh. so is it mandatory to, to trigger the browser in headless mode okay uh, actually this was part of uh, um, I was going to talk about that, but uh, I skip it in because I wanted to make a real demo uh, about the video recording. This is the reason why, uh, for our company, we don't use the parallel option. We just distribute the tests in a single mode on each machine. So we have integrated the video recording in our framework, and this way, for example, if you start two browsers, you cannot see the, the second one. You know, this is why we use many machines instead of like running the tests uh, in parallel on each machine. Um, this is the first question. The second one, um, the, the way we implemented the, the thing with the screenshots, we don't use the native web driver um, screenshot thing because of this problem and not only, because some of the web driver um, uh, implementations, they just take a screenshot of the visible part of the desktop. So we use a, um, a JavaScript library and execute a JavaScript that, um, that for example, uh, merges the DOM and creates an image from it. So we create full page screenshots based on JavaScript. And this way, it doesn't matter whether the browser is in headless mode or not. OK, maybe one more. All right, one more. Uh, so, what is the fault tolerance design for either agents or the server? What you have? Sorry. Fault tolerance in the sense, like, you know, if something goes down, uh, are we still kind of like you know, able to grab all the results and everything? Uh, sorry, I cannot hear the question. But <laughs> so, essentially, question is like, uh, we have n number of agents running, and there's one particular server that's essentially kind of distributing the work, right? So, what happens is one of the agents goes down. So. What happens in that case, like, no, I mean, uh, uh, is this uh, main server being updated or there's some kind of monitoring happening on those agents? Uh, why I'm asking is, like, if something of that nature happens, it might go into infinite wait, right? One of the machine, what is given for a work, is not able to complete the work. Uh, can you repeat? I, I think I got it. Um, if you are running 20 tests on an agent, test number four goes and somehow the agent dies. Mm -hmm what happens to the rest of the tests and how do you